Hello, you beautiful sons of bitches. So today I'm going to be going over two of my favorite passes from headquarters, and I consider them like low hanging fruit, entry level passes. All right. Um, this is at, this is just me teaching a class. Okay. This is I have one hour to work with uh, teaching a class at Kirkhoff School in St. Louis. So I obviously can't show you everything I know about the position. Uh, if you guys want to learn more, you know I have instructionals on this, like no gee bus on everything. Okay. Um, if you guys have any ideas on how we can improve audio and video for these videos, me and Bird do not know anything about cameras currently. We're looking at maybe getting a camera and uh, some kind of microphone set up because we are aware that we have atrocious audio. And we want to fix it up for you guys. So uh, if you guys have any ideas, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, good day. I know this is funny. I always show passing stuff because, especially no gi, it's just because if you don't know how to pass no gi specifically, it's just not like passing in the gi. Some things are just not as effective or just completely off limits, you know? And the reason why, okay, so like, theoretically you can do Toriano type spinning motions in the Nogi. I can move this motherfucker out of position, but getting from here to here is what's the problem, okay? And especially if the mats are slippery at all, I don't have any traction, it's easy to get past someone's legs in the it's very hard to get down, okay? So a lot of the Nogi stuff that's really effective and then the fact that even like a high level, it's going to be stuff that includes having a connection already, okay? So being able to get some kind of upper body connection either during the pass or like setting up the pass. That way once I beat his legs, I'm already connected and I can pull myself into something. You know, in the key, when you get to here, it's no big deal because you can pull yourself down and you can connect to something. You can always pull in. It just doesn't exist in the same way. No key, okay? So I'm going to bring you guys through some passes, especially from... Uh, this headquarters position, okay, it's actually one of the stronger no passing positions to set stuff up because there's so many options, right? So, first off, for the guy who's on his back, don't let him do that. Turn, if you're sitting up, don't let him sit up. Always put him on their back, okay? I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it, but the gist of it is you're always grip fighting your way in, okay? And by grip fighting, like, I like to get my hands on the outside of his hands in a wrestling stance. That way my legs aren't too exposed. I'm not giving up easy wrestle-ups and he can't just pull himself under me. And I'm just trying to get close enough while hand fighting him, that I can do something with that range and the grip I'm gonna go for next, okay? So if I get close enough here, I'm tracking his hands, if I feel him push back into me, that loads, it connects his shoulders now, and if I push back, he'll move. So if he pushes, I can just push him over, okay? Otherwise, a lot of times you can literally just straight up push people over, okay? And the difference between this, this is how much of a dick you are, all right? <laughs> Um, another really effective thing you can do is hand fight your way in and come down with only one arm. Don't use two, okay? Scoop an angle and don't just lift, back it up and lift and you'll pull his hips out from under him without really giving him a chance to reattach to you. Okay, so now I've got him on his back. Okay? This is where the important stuff starts. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to step in on the same side, okay? Nogi especially. I really don't like guys stepping across because of how dangerous wrestle-ups are and inversions. It's really hard to stop someone from reverting without being able to grab something to control their hips, okay? So I'm just not a huge fan of these cross steps. Right? Whatever side he's on already, so if he was on this side versus this side, that's the side I'm going to step in with, okay? So here, all right? And because he's already kind of down and flat, Let's say I just want to go straight to headquarters. Sometimes I stay up here long enough to bait a knee slice. Like, you grab my ankle. Is that how you <laughs> What? We're going to talk about that. But uh, normal people, <laughs> I can't go down there. I can knee slice him, okay? But assuming he's not, or assuming he's just not really giving me a knee slice, okay, I'm always going to kind of come down on top of the guy, right? This is your headquarters position, okay? And... My goal here is to be setting up my passes, and the way I'm going to do that, first, I need to prevent this bottom leg here from getting retracted, okay? Because right now, if I'm over top of it and I'm smashing it down, this foot is out of play. And no matter how flexible he is, I can always just lean a little more forward, I can just kind of palm it and block it. I can also take my right knee, put more weight down, or I can take my foot and hook it under his shin and kind of turn it like this, and use that to kind of pull myself down. Okay. But it's extremely important that I don't lose this. Right? This is the first thing you're going to fuck up when you start trying to do this live as opposed to drill. Because he's going to fight for this back. So something my right hand is doing is going to be coming down and checking this. Okay, so if, I, if I'm doing a poor job using just my knee and my foot to keep this controlled and my weight, he starts to actually pull it back. My hand's going to come down, cup it, and pull it back in. Okay. 
So we have to keep this pin. And what's going on here? They're never going to let you come down into something like this. If they did, you literally just use that to pass it. I've never had it happen. Okay, so it's like one of those theoretically you could, but it's probably not going to happen. So you're always going to be kind of putting this foot underneath your hips. Okay. So my weight is going to differentiate between here and here. Um, people have a bad habit in this position of not putting their weight on the guy. So they're here and here, and they're trying to posture. You are actually safe to do this. Like, this looks dangerous, right? It looks like he would underhook me. Just so you guys can see, if he grabs me and underhooks me as hard as he can, and as long as he only has one butterfly hook, I'm good. Okay? Once he connects to me, but you sweep him. Right? With two hands. <laughs> All right? He's stuck on me now. Okay? And because I'm on top and I have a better leg positioning to start, no matter how hard he pulls me in, I can always outwinch my brain. So I'm safe. As long as I don't lose this bottom butterfly hook. So, you can actually lean forward so hard you can put your hands on the mat. That's not optimal, unless you're juiced out of your mind like Fort Ryan. That huge. I, would, I really wouldn't suggest small guys try to do that as their main pass and go to. Try to do other stuff first, but you can get away with doing it. Okay. So I'm down, I'm controlling this. I'm making sure this foot has some pressure inwards. Okay. And this is just a butterfly hook tip in general. If you let someone get their ankle further away from their hips, where they lift, he gets way more lift. Now, if I smash his heel into his thigh or into his butt, where I lift down, he has a, an extremely small amount of lift left. Okay, so this is like, if I was in his butterfly guard, okay, and I gave him some space, he could lift me. And one of the ways you deal with butterfly guard is heavy forward hip pressure that smashes his heel into his butt, so he can't lift me very well. And it's just the same principle being applied from here. All right, so it's locking this leg. I want to have some active hip pressure in. I am going to push my hips into his foot a little bit. I'm not just going to lean. I'm actually going to thrust. Okay? And that means I have to be on my toes. If I'm flat-footed, I don't have any forward pressure other than body weight. Okay, so I'm always on my toes here. So this is our floating position. And it's here we start looking for different stuff. Okay? Depend Kind of depending on what he fucks up and gives me, and if he's not giving me anything immediately, I'll start going for certain stuff. We're working down certain routes. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple of the really easy ones first okay, before we really like dive into the weird shit or the more complicated shit. Okay, so I can say these like low hanging fruit passes. There's stuff you can just go for right away if he's giving it to you. Okay, and a lot of that is with this frame. All right, this frame has a habit of either being retracted. Okay. In the middle, or push forward. All right, we'll have different reactions based on that. And it can be more to the inside, or it can be more to the outside of my center line and his rib line. Okay. Just to, before I dive into too much to what we're going to go over real quick, just so you guys can see why that matters. Okay. If he starts to push me away, I can come over the top and collapse the hips really easily. Okay. And that's him using his knee to push me away. That's going to let me go over the top and then I get on his thigh. And being on his thigh with my chest is what's going to let me squash it and then turn. Okay? So that little mistake in having too much separation there gives me a whole pass. Just that alone. Him pushing me away. All right? If I can get his knee turned to the inside at all, I can come down to these folding passes and play from here with my chest. And if he keeps a good frame, I can come in and penetrate for the leg. So just by having this angle slightly to the inside of my solar plexus, right, now my chest is on the outside, my whole body weight can go in. So the difference is like just millimeters sometimes. And if it's on the outside, I can come in. This is where you get really secure passes. Okay, so this knee position is going to matter a lot. Okay, but for the low-hanging fruit stuff, let's say he's just being decently defensive. He's not leaving a lot of easy openings with this. It's not too far one way, not too far the other way. He's here, he can be doing whatever he's doing with his hands, okay? Hopefully keeping them to himself, <laughs> all right? So what I'm going to look to do in this pass, guys, I can do this really quickly or I can do this uh, slowly and more methodically, right? The quick way is just to know you can outwinch your wiper this butterfly hook, and I'm actually going to just go through this way as I turn back here. And you notice I didn't do a huge back step there, okay? This is a jiu-jitsu tip in general. If you can ever not backstep and instead of windshield wiper, it's going to be better. 
Okay, the difference in boxing terms would be slipping a punch by a mile or a centimeter, and one leaves you in a better position to count. Okay, in jiu-jitsu, you know, if I do big back steps and I make a lot of space, I have to bring come back into that space. Okay, now back stepping or which one versus butterfly hooks? Okay. It, that matters a lot more because if I try to back step right now and he follows me with a butterfly hook, there's a decent chance he'll catch my knee and I'm going to lose my balance. He's not getting up here because my hip is under his hip and I can easily come here. So no matter what he did, he's not getting up. He might just get up. You see what I mean? I always auto win the wrestle off unless he's just like a D1 champion and I can't put him back down while having his leg hunched up. Okay. Now if I windshield for that, don't let him track me. See my foot. That's the motion. I'm just not giving him a knee line to hook. I'm beating his butterfly hook early. Now he doesn't really get a chance to do anything. Now to kind of cheat and make that easier, okay, you can do two things first. One is winch wiper your left foot up on top of his foot first. Okay? And this is something you'll do a lot in this position, just as in general will set up a lot of stuff. But now when I go off to the side like this, he literally just didn't have a chance to follow me. Okay, so I already beat the hook. Now, this other way is the way I actually kind of like to do this right now, right? Especially on guys that are just being smart with their frame and then being defensive. If I feel comfortable and I've got my balance and I've got him stuck for a second, I can actually take my left hand and just come back and just kind of block his shin line. Okay, because now when I disconnect my hips and move around, this doesn't get to auto follow. Okay, I have something that's going to give me some separation and I can get in front of it. So, just by being here, reach back and put some pressure on his ankle. I don't have to grab it. I can just wide cut and push it in. Okay. Now I can start to winch up with my right knee through and my left leg through. Okay. Okay. And you notice I'm turning back away from him. Like my right hand, when I do this, is going to go here on his hips. And then my goal immediately here is to start working myself down. Okay. Um, but because I'm still holding his ankle, because I'm blocking his hips, a lot of times they turn into you, and the knee has to cross or the deep angle. Okay, and what that gives me here is an easy block here. Okay? So a lot of times this will be the start of a passing chain, where you get here, it turns into you. I step over, and I can winch right all the way around to the other side without him ever having a chance to catch my anywhere to always winch right over his frames. And then you can do crazy shit like throwing back chases, which we'll worry about later. And the way I would finish this pass, he didn't turn into me, he didn't give me that option, is just by sliding my hips down underneath his hips in my bottom leg. Because now if he turns into me at this point, there's just not half of the catch. Okay, and the more he turns into me, the more I don't lose these. I'm like, I'm lifting my knee up like this, I can come through, and the hand leave this. And now I have control which way I sit through. I can just walk this forward, come around, and cover. Okay, very simple information, very short explanation. You guys ready to do it? This is a joke, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me go over it real quick. <laughs> All right. So, first step, he's on his back, where he's sitting up, put him on his back. Okay. It's just a good rule in general. Putting people on their back, you can start from to choose when to connect to me. I get to choose how I come in. Okay. Come in, stuff one side, make sure I'm coming over this foot here and get comfortable with it, okay? You learn how to control this position. Okay? Just by keeping the plate in, keeping some weight on it, and then I'll talk more later about what to do with the circle lifting me around, but try not to let it lift you for now, okay? Usually people get lifted because they're not aware of their weight distribution. Like if I'm leaning this way right now, my weight's on my right knee, with this, that's gonna move. And that's just me leaning, okay? Now, the same thing, I'm equal, but lift, it's very different. And that's just me feeling out feeling his frame, and just being aware of my weight. Okay. So I got this block out. I'm here. It's not giving me anything easy. So the first thing you do, okay, is winch wiper on top of this foot, and I gotta talk about that with the actually. If you can't just do this, you're not comfortable with your winch wiper mechanics, one of the things you can do to make this easier is just kind of lean forward on it, okay? And generally when I lean forward, I hook his, his knee a little bit better. So that way I have something to pull myself back down. When I lean, his foot will go past my hips, and that gives me a bigger area to winch wiper on top of up here. Okay? Now I can take my hand through, and I can literally just winch wiper through right now. Okay? 
and if he doesn't turn into me, or if I can get ahead of him turning into me, I can start to slide down, hook, and I can start to work my way up. If he does turn into me, just keep him down and stay away from his legs for a second. You want him to overcross. And once, I, I don't need to do this extreme, but even something like this, if I can get this knee line on top of his knee line, he's stuck facing this way now, okay? So I could easily just come back and start to cover him here, and come back over the top, or I could go around here. Like from this position, my knee's blocking the zip line, all I do is put my other foot on top. He still can't turn back and follow me. And I can just circle. Okay. So one more time. He's on his back, I come in, I pin it down, make sure. The better you get this, the less you use your hand for this, by the way. I want my hand to be doing other stuff. So like at first, you have to make sure you're keeping this down. You're just gonna take more focus. But then the better you get it in more, <clears throat> you'll trust your legs to keep it down. Okay. So here. Um, say I do the other one, and not grab his ankle. Okay, especially guys that are like more retracting their legs. Like if he was pushing into me, I would go for the other stuff. Because now this is exposed, and the further his knee is from his chest, the easier it is to move in or out. Right. So he's more neutral. Here, hand goes through at the same time as I go. I would not feel safe just sitting here like this. Okay, so it's in. Watch my feet. Pivots, big windshield wipers. Try to control this leg so he can't turn into you. Now I can start working my way down. Okay. So if I want to come down here, hook that. I can come through and hand weave it very easily. And then sometimes they can get annoying with their hands here. It's usually not a big deal, just kind of post on me. You just have to eat this a little bit and keep pushing back. You know, use the hips to control them. There's something he can't stop me from doing, but push. He's coming wide over. Okay, he doesn't have any way to stop me from going wider and wider. He can't fall me that far. So no matter what, how much he pushes, as long as I don't let him slide away from you, okay, don't let him get further relative to you. Keep following and tracking him. Okay, now, now push my shoulder and stuff. Now I can club his head and square up. Okay, uh, we're gonna be walking around, trying to help everyone out, have you guys partner up, okay? And you put him on the back, put him in the headquarters position, spend a little bit of time practicing, keeping the bottom legs stuffed, and then you're going to do both versions. You're going to windshield wiper over his foot and go through, and you reach back and pin it and go through. Okay? Any questions? I want a PD one more thing, please. Yes. Here. Uh, you also call this the floating pass position. Okay? okay? If I feel like I can just do that, I can just go. All right. Otherwise, this is safer. This is always going to be safer. But it's going to kind of tell him what he did. Oh shit, oh my god. So once I come up there, he should start to move for crazy a little bit. But if we're, you know, later on, we'll be able to punish for everything he does. Now, I'm past his legs already. Now it's just staying past him. And I have to start to scoop these up, work myself down. Now I've got side control here. And then like, the one I run into a lot here, because I'm so upper body oriented, you know what I mean? His legs are here in front of me. I'm not already covering them. Most people turn in here. You see I'm backing up away from his legs so he can't catch anything. Now I can block it and I can come back over. But the difference is when I come back over, now I'm facing his upper body. So his legs are a lot easier to ignore. Or when I come over the top here and pin it, I can come back and cover. But at that point, it's just once you wipe right. Okay, there should always be some kind of block until I get past it. So like my knee and my foot, kind of seamlessly transition. One comes off, the other one goes on, so he never gets to freely turn back into me. Now, you can just take your time moving yourself around. Okay. Guys, don't, don't be afraid to ask me a question. You can ask me about any moves, repeat it 15 times, or if you want to wait I'm walking around, I'm kind of stupid, so you might have to actually hit my attention. Okay. I try to look for blank faces, uh, but then I also try to look for eye So sometimes it's a lie. So, guys, go to Greg Burns and Okay, try it out. <laughs> now, I, I need to show you guys a drill to make your windshield wipers better, okay? And we're going to spend a very small amount of time on it. I want you guys to just be able to understand it so you guys can do it on your own time. This is um, the fastest way to develop good windshield wiper mechanics, okay? And to explain more about what a windshield wiper is, it's my ability to rotate my foot and my heel up towards my hips and move it around here. Okay, that kind of circle motion. So imagine I was unhooking something here, my 
Okay, whereas if I just tried to step out of it like that, follow me. You see what I mean? Whereas but if I can just out circle it, he doesn't really get a chance to follow me. And there's a lot of different ways to practice these mechanics, and you're gonna actually want to practice a lot of them from uh, more specific places, but for windshield wipers in general. Okay, you come in, you can put your hands on his knees, but if you put all your weight on your hands, it's gonna fuck him up. Okay. So all I'm doing is having the guy just keeps moderate butterfly hooks. Okay, and the better I get at these, the tighter he can keep these. Okay. You're gonna take one knee, right? you're going to forest gump it to the inside. Okay, some of that. <laughs> Here. Okay. Because what I want to do is kind of smash his heel to his butt, okay, so he can't follow me. My knees to block at this location. Now, without taking my weight off of my knee, and also without putting all of my weight on my knee, I'm going to rotate my foot up, around, and to the inside and clear the butterfly hook. And then for the drill, I would do the same thing on the other side. Force gump, rotate up, around, inside. You can reset. You can work on these nice and slow and really focus on the movements, okay? Or, fuck it, speed run. All right. I always advise drilling slow at first because making sure the mechanics are correct before you pick the speed up is actually very important. Okay, so in, up, and you notice my knee itself doesn't move. It doesn't lift up more. It doesn't go down more. Whatever pressure it starts with here, I'm going to keep that exact same pressure as I lift my foot up. Now I can circle the inside. Here, circle the inside. Okay. Uh, the next, one, so on the first one, we went through the guy's hips. Okay, essentially, we went around to the inside. Um, that is inherently riskier because his hips already turned in that way. He can retract his knees a lot more. Okay, so it's like you have to be able to finish that one a little bit better. Right now, this other one, I have some triggers on. Okay, I can kind of just go for it if I see the opportunity. Okay, but this is one of the ways I really punish people that try to get up on their elbow from this position or they like to reach up from my head a lot. Okay, stuff like this is not gonna punish him. Okay, and there's a couple ways to do this too. I can do a back step, a hip pivot, a windshield wiper, or all three of the above because fuck him individually. Right? So, uh, I'm not too concerned about your balance anywhere on this one. Like, yeah, I just consider this a position in general and all of the different ways you're gonna be maintaining your balance are just part of playing this position, okay? So whatever's going on, if I'm leaning forward, if I'm hip heavy, doesn't matter, all I'm looking, I'm just gonna show you guys what it is here. You see it's extremely easy for me to get past his hips. Now that was trusting basically almost a back step, okay? I did winch up my legs a little bit. I kind of hid my heel to my, my hips so he didn't really get a chance to catch me in a butterfly hook. But if he was on the ball there, there was a chance he could have, okay? So it's just like everything else in all these positions, if you ever get a chance, so once you wipe your foot on top first, it's gonna make it a lot safer for me to clear and get to the outside. All we're looking for on this is the outside of his hip. Okay, so the times I would look for this pass would not be the times where he's opening it like this. You see, there's nothing there for me to go up to. All right, and if he was crossed more to the inside, I would just fold him this way. Okay, so again, these are passes from this Goldilocks defensive area here, okay? Now, what I'm doing yeah, I'm not going to winch up, I'm just going to do it real slow, is I'm feeling out when I think I can just clear to the outside. Okay, and I'm coming in forward, because like I said, if I, if I land past him, but really far away, there is no fucking way I'm finishing a pass on someone like the Rotulos from there. I'm way too far out. Now, if you come down, basically chest to chest, here I'm already connected. Okay, they can bridge and buck and turn into me, but I'm here and I can actually just finish this pass. Okay, so it's important that you learn how to almost corkscrew your hips behind you while maintaining forward pressure with your chest. Okay, so slow, fast. Uh, both of them involve me just knowing that as I rotate to the outside, I'll be able to slide up. And again, like once my weight ever gets on the outside of him here, you can see it's just outside hip exposure. This is a pass opportunity. The only thing to stop me from being past 30 is just how low I am. Okay, so if I back stepped here, and all I'd have to do is just come down off it, this is always gonna block him from turning into me. But if I don't cover him right away, he'll scooch out. Now this is in the way again. 
So that's why it's so important to get down right away. Come back. And again, you'll see me like doing stuff like this. Do you see how I'm still trying to bring my heel to my butt here? Okay. So if I just did a big back step like this, falling in the butterfly hook, that's what you're running the risk of. Okay. So you're always going to be trying to do those winter up and you can't just to not get hooked. Now, here. That was more of a corkscrew. Okay. Corks, there's a little, there's like a couple variations essentially, but to be either the same pass, there's like that big corkscrew motion I did. And then it's just kipping up over his legs. Kipping up over his legs. <laughs> that. The, the benefit of that one is that I come down straighter and I can more securely cover his upper body. The benefit of corkscrew is it's easier to securely get past his legs because I'm covering a wider area. I'm going higher with it. Okay. The forward posture one is more along the lines of slipping a punch by a centimeter. Now, my triggers where I'm always going to do this, no matter what's going on. Okay. Uh, something you, you can basically do this anytime they reach for your head. Thing is, now he's given up the ability to turn back into me this way. His weight's on his other shoulder. This side is basically compromised. Once he's on my head, he actually has some pressure. So from this position in general, I do not let them play on my head. If they're reaching for my head, I'm punishing him while he reaches. Or if I didn't take the window, I'm dealing with this. I'm getting this off of my head. Okay? Just you wouldn't let a good wrestler hang on your head the whole time. You don't want to let a good guard player hang on your head. Okay? But while he's reaching, like I said, he doesn't have the ability to really react on this side. So that's a great time if you're mentally aware of what's going on to just go. Okay. Now, the other time I'm like, for this, three times I think, I'm going to go for this basically every time. The other one is going to be if they get up on this elbow. And generally guys that play heavy on the head also play off their elbow. Okay. But when he's up on his elbow, you see how his frame kind of almost naturally turned in this way? So if I get any sense on the outside of him, it's going to be really devastating to him because he's already turned in this way. He's not even going to feel like he can turn back and do this one. Most people turn away and not maybe chase in the back. Uh, ideally, I get this while he's getting up on his elbow. So if there's something like this on here, he goes to get up. So easy it is for me to just clear. And because people that get on their elbows are stupid, what we're going to do, especially if this is really far away, we're going to come through and just hook his wrist around behind him here. Now he doesn't really have anywhere to go. I can come forward, chop this out, and I can flatline it. And if he tried to roll and sit out or anything like that, it becomes my pivot point to just follow it. Okay? So, and you can do this most of the time. No knee is easier to do this because there's no, not that much friction as there is in the knee. But anytime this motherfucker gets up on his elbow, here, like if I had long ass arms and God didn't forsake me with my short, stubby body, okay, I would come through and go here. But I didn't eat my vegetables, so I don't get to do that. I have to go around first. But if, any, like if you have lengthy arms, or if you feel like you can get on this, or if you feel like you can bring this closer to yourself like that, this is all. There's nothing he's doing really like this. Okay? The third time I would go for this pass is on a coward. Okay? Well, really, it's actually, it's the guy's doing the right thing. Right? For me, if I'm the guy on bottom and someone's trying to pin my head down, your alarm bells have to go off right now. Because once it's pinned, everything you're going to do to unpin it is giving him a pass that he might be able to get. Okay? So the guy on the bottom, he's fucking smart. So he's unpinning this in, he runs, slides away, scooches away, everything. But for the guy to get away, he's got to plant his feet and he's got to push himself off of that, which is going to make more space from here to here. And high level guard passing, guard passing in general, that's mostly what you're looking for. Is separation between the knees and their chest. So, here we go. Okay, activate your. I'm just gonna start coming right into the bottom. Okay, let's do that slower. <laughs> so, again, it's like I'm, I'm choosing his hip angle here. Okay, when I'm coming down, he wants to slide away. I just start coming around covering his body. Or if my chest is closer, when he decides, oh fuck, go ahead and run. So, you can just, you just walk around. To the outside. A lot of times you don't even have to backstep or windshield ever, but that's going to be based on this feel. Right? And there's a lot of overlap between this kind of stuff and knowing how to do like body lock mechanics. Okay? So like if I ever got on this body here, anyway, even if he kept a little bit of a hook, 
that's going to be coming very well. Right. So we've got three versions of going around to the outside. Okay, all of them are going to involve this meeting in the middle over there. Okay, I've got court screws, back step stuff. I've got slipping it, which is getting to the outside, and now I'm coming in. And then I've got the runs. And you're just chasing me down. You're working yourself around. Making sure I don't get caught in a butterfly like scenario. That one you have to be better at and really feel out. Okay. Questions? Can I say them again? Yes. Okay. So, if I was coming in, he starts to run. I'm either going to stop him down, or like I said, I'm going to try to get just around the outside of the upper knee and just to pin myself to the body. I got down, I'm going to try to clap my head. There's no reason for that to go. Just pure, not reacting fast enough. Okay. Or if you try to get one's elbow, so yeah, I know he doesn't have the power of the butter hook anymore because he's shifted his whole hips. Okay, and because he's on his elbow, don't think. <laughs> this is going to be a back chase most of the time, or he'll just keep kind of turn back into you, and sometimes it actually just takes out control. But that's going to be very uh, like scenario specific. Okay. Questions? Okay. Where he runs? Yeah, where he runs. When they run, they actually you can do a lot of stuff to them. Okay? Uh, I talk about this a lot where people that are running away are making openings that it's hard to punish them, but if you can, it's a great time to punish them. Because again, look at my hips. Anytime you get above my knee line, I'm fucked. My legs will straighten, straighter my legs, easier they return, one way to the other. And all of those are going to come into guard pass. Are you looking in for anything? Am I what? Are you looking for a head or underhooks when you're coming across? In, in this whole position in general, I, I want underhooks. I want to be on the body. That's but that's more just playing in general. I'm still giving you guys like the, the first couple of easy passes, essentially. Where it's like most people are already making the mistakes that we need to Okay. And as the better and tighter they get, the more you actually have to dive into the nuance of the position. But yeah, if you get an underhook anywhere, you are doing a good thing. Either or, okay? At any time. Can I see the box foot motion on the Course tree? Course tree is kind of just this motion. Ah, yeah. Okay. Do you want to see the camera? Yeah. That'd be awesome. Mm. Thank you. It's really should be being here with some ability to come forward. Here, forward. Or here, already down, forward. Other questions? Okay, we're gonna work on this spell until we're gonna roll, so grab your Bye, have a great time.